be great so that anyone so for anyone who didn't manage to who had great expectations of getting a lunchtime off and then didn't manage to get it because work kind of came in they can watch the, the recording and so welcome to how to have presence and impact in 2022 upgrade your status as leaders and so first of all my name is robin miles from inspire me consulting I'm based here in Byron Bay in Australia and um, I work with professionals who are in some form of transition, personally, professionally, or a combination of both. And um, to one, help them get clarity on what they want from life and career and living with more meaning, joy and purpose. And if they've got that clarity, then I help them lift their level of influence and impact so they can actually achieve what they want as a kind of like a a secondary little bit and i'll give you a bit of an overview of the you know the, the the kind of model that i use for for working with them with working with people as well but i really wanted this time to kind of get into this subject about presence and impact because there's a few subjects that i've found to be the ones that have had like a, like a lot of uh resonance with people this subject is one of them one of the other ones is about you know managing your energy Another one is about optimizing your productivity with time. Uh, and another one is getting clarity on purpose is the other subject. So those other three subjects we'll be doing webinars on uh, later on in the year. Um, if there's questions, queries as we go, please put them into the chat. Or um, I just like to see people and let's have a conversation, to be honest. Um, so um, first question is why is this subject important or of interest to you? So uh, feel free to jump in the chat and write something or just come off of mute. Don't be shy. I won't be shy, Robin. Go, Robin. Um, it, it's, it's a good subject for me because I, I do find myself at times uh, in a meeting, mm. I'll, I'll say something and almost people don't hear it. Someone else will say something similar a half an hour later and they go, Oh, fantastic idea. And I go, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all been there. You're like, I just said that. <laughs> That's right. So. My wife actually says that about me because she says, I think we should do this. And then five minutes later, I'm like, I reckon we should do this. She's like, That's what I just said. <laughs> um, Emma, you were off mute as well. Yeah. Um, I guess for me, it's it's really important for um, myself and also the team at Fusion to really be present in client. Um, meetings and certainly now we've, we're doing a lot of that the digital calls <laughs> um, everything everything online so making sure that with that shift from the face-to-face -face interactions really mm. finding those skills to be able to be present and and really do the right thing by our clients so that's why it's yeah. important to me yeah totally and I think the the virtual world is a big thing hopefully things will loosen up a little bit or we're going to be doing more virtually and what are some of the you, you know, a lot of people go, oh, the virtual world's different. It's like in everything that I train in, like negotiation, collaboration, influence, influence and impact, all these things, the skills, tools, and tactics are kind of exactly the same, but you just got to be a little bit more disciplined about doing them. That's the kind of the key. That's the key thing. And there's, it, sometimes it can make it a little bit easier as well. Like you can't see what's happening around here because there's chaos just outside of this video camera do you know what i mean but i look good in this <laughs> so you know there's um yeah so we'll 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 pick up on that um cray it's also very important for career progression as we yeah no longer is visible yeah absolutely visual age cool just keep the things about why the subject's important and um, i'm going to pose this this is the cycle of change um which is my methodology about how i work with people because people say how do you actually change and I think it's just important for people to understand is because you change through getting new insight and you will go on some programs or you will do something where you come away with new insights and you feel really great with all these new insights. And then three months later, you're back with the same problems that you always had. So why is that? Because you need more than just insight. You need to have insight into things to then consider, right. Okay. Do I actually really understand it? Do I need to, break it down a little bit more do i need to do a bit more reading can i get some understanding of uh, of this at a more granular level and then number three is really important acceptance it's a little bit like what rob said R rob accepts that there's certain times that 
he kind of misses an opportunity and that he could have maybe done something differently in that moment to have a different impact. So the acceptance piece is that humility that we need to have with regards to we're all on a journey. You know, we are our greatest, you know, there's one common factor in every success we've ever had. And there's one common factor in every failing we've ever had. And it's that we were there. So we need to give ourselves a pat on the back and we need to give ourselves a slap with regards to having humility that we can kind of always incrementally improve performance. And then once we've accepted that we can do better with this new understanding, that's when we go into strategy, which is like, right, what is it that I'm going to do differently moving forwards? What is it I'm going to try? And what is, and this is the next thing, because some people kind of go, yeah, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to have more presence and impact. Great. What are you going to do? What's an action that you can physically take? And this is where a lot of self-judgment comes in for people because they're like, well, it doesn't sound really big. It's just that at the next team meeting, I'm actually going to speak up and say what I think about this subject. That's big enough. It's the one percenters. If we shift what we do with our action just by one percent, one percent, one percent, it becomes an exponential curve. And so it's through taking that action that then we can draw new observation, reflection, and inspiration, and get new kind of insight, you know? And then, you know, because we might try things and it might not work, and that's okay. But we're on that journey of, of, of kind of seeking to understand. So my invitation for you today is like, what new insights do you get out of this? What, what understandings and what actions are you going to take? And I'd love to hear in the chat, what are some like little individual actions you're going to do? And I'm going to give you lots of recommendations for stuff and ideas it might be one of them or it might be something else that you kind of come up with so why is this subject important there's lots of articles about executive presence and impact and it is about having a voice that is heard because with presence and impact you basically get the cut through that you need without that it's kind of like you know like i've worked with so many people who you know, academically, intellectually, amazing. And no one listens to them. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, it just feels like it was all, you know, worth, you know, not, not worthwhile um, at, at the end of the day. Because the, having the ability to pierce through people's understanding, to get them to listen and connect, that the power is in that, you know. And so... If we're thinking about in business, you know, we're tendering for projects and how do we get the cut through there? If we're looking at influencing anyone, the number one factor with regards to influence, persuasion, collaboration, negotiation is relationship. Relationship is liking. Liking is having a form of trust, which comes down to this subject. It's like the key component. You can learn all the skills, tools, tactics you want, if you're not doing this, you're not going to get the cut through that you kind of really need. And that's why it's really critically important. And um, this is the inspiring model that, you know, the, the coaching that I do when people are feeling a bit stuck, we're working on who they are as a leader, identifying hidden obstacles like self-confidence. I've got trainings on self-confidence, mastery, negative thinking, overcoming fear, you know, a whole range of subjects to go into some strategic planning. And then we need to lift our influence and impact and obviously leadership impact is where this subject is so these nine areas around the outside are different areas that i work with people on and this webinar today is an example of one of those trainings that's um, in there uh, i like to quiet my internal voice telling me i'm not confident so what we need to do is we that is a voice that we all have and the invitation with those voices in our head is that we need to go closer to them because we tend to kind of try to push that voice away and we need to embrace that voice and actually go, thank you, inner critic voice. I'm going to listen to you intently now. And then once you've told me what you've got to tell me, then I'm going to make a decision about what I'm going to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, so there is training on negative thinking that we, that we do as well, which is, you know, and these are some of the, like the blockers, you know, for a lot of us being more confident and those things. And some people, and I remember doing a session on confidence, like um, I was with a group of young engineers and they said, and I said, why are you not doing this, 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 this? And they said, you just don't feel confident. 
I said, well, let's work on confidence. Then they went, well, how can you work on confidence? It just is. And it was in the organization that Ava and I were working in. And I just simply, and I just simply did a thing and went, right, what are you feeling? How are you feeling in a negative kind of form? Right, that's, that's the reason why we're feeling less confident. And then on the flip side, I said, for everyone, what can we do about it? I'm not confident because I don't know the subject matter. Okay, we're going to set up some research and, and pick up champions who are going to delve into detail. We don't feel confident about this. Okay, this is an action that we can do. And we just came up with a 10 point, literally like a priority 10 point plan of shifting confidence within this group of engineers. It was, it was pretty good. But that's why they were hearing that in a critic, but then not doing anything with it. Does that make sense? We just need to go closer to it, accept it as a reality. And now what are we going to do as a consequence? Yeah. But if there's any questions or queries at the end of this, or you want to reach out then and um, just let me know. Um, let's rate ourselves just quickly. Everyone jump in the chat. Presence and impact. On a scale of one to 10, where are you at? Everyone just jump in the chat and just put a number. Let's see where everyone's at. And if anyone writes 10, I'm gonna hand over host rights to you and you can just give this a go. So, okay, no one's putting 10. Uh, six, seven, eight, seven, four. Cool. So some a little bit stronger than others, but yeah, between that four, four to eight kind of range, yeah. There's always, yeah, it depends on the audience. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and what I would be interested in is to go, oh, I wonder why that's the case then. What's kind of go closer to it? <laughs> you can't run away from these things. Um, so what's some of the pain points of a lack of presence and impact? Rob gave us one. Who wants to come off of mute and give us another pain point of a la having a lack of presence and impact? I'll share one. Being young. Yep, go, Alison. Um, so not being able to control when things go off track, in yeah. like when I'm facilitating um, or hold people to time. Mm. Yeah. So, so it's re that, like really just not being listened to. Is yeah, that yeah? Not not owning the room. I guess when when I really need to be facilitating and leading that conversation. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Alison. And then there was someone else who went to say something. Yeah, it's just being the youngest in the room. Yeah, being the youngest in the room. Um, mm, so, so some of these things we've got to get kind of a little bit interested in. Is some of these things actually a reality? And how much is our own internal dialogue actually kind of holding us back? Do you know what I mean? Um, which is the subject of another subject, but that's the one that I'd invite you to kind of go a little bit, a little bit kind of closer to. And I mean, the, the, the real pain points for me in a, in an outcome perspective is that everything takes more time, more energy, more effort, and you don't get what you want is basically the, the kind of the, the lack of presence and impact. And because it's taking more time, energy and effort, and you're not getting the outcomes that you want, you tend to have to spend more time, an effort doing things that don't really be needed. And the only person that suffers as a consequence is your own personal time or your time with your loved ones, your family, your kids, whatever the case may be. So if we can dial up our presence and impact, then we're going to be more efficient, more effective, spending the time doing the things that we enjoy much more and getting the outcomes that we want. Um, so we're going to go into the, the subject matter much more now. So the key thing is that you're always making an impact. If you're saying something, if you're not saying something, you're always making an impact. But the thing to consider is, is it the right impact? <laughs> you know, um, and I love this image, um, which is uh, you make an impact in the sand, but what you leave behind is an impression. And my mum always used to say, yeah, I go everywhere twice, the second time to apologise. You know, it's it's like the, yes, you have an impact and it can be a really strong impact, but what's the impression that you leave behind? Is it that, okay, yeah, Robin came, he had an impact, but boy, what a dickhead he is, you know? Or is he a great bloke or is he this or is he, 
you know, not you, not you, that Robin, me, Robin, I was meaning. <laughs> I saw Robin <laughs> Moyer getting kind of offended there. <laughs> so, you know, you make an impact, but what's the impression? And just thinking about that image, if you take nothing away from this other than that, that's going to be super helpful for you, to be honest. Um, because the thing is that that impression greatly influences what you're able to achieve how people follow you. So we need to think about that impact and the impression that we're having. Because the thing is, if we don't consciously focus on it, we leave it up to fate. Do you know what I mean? And if anything's that important to us, we need to actively manage the perceptions that others have of us. Yeah. And we do this subconsciously because you go, I'm going into work today. I've got a big meeting. I'm going to put, you know, whatever clothes on, for instance, or I'm going to, you know, even put on my power pants or whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, my lucky underwear is going on today, you know, but it's like, it's a matter of you need, you, you do it kind of subconsciously, but let's do it even more consciously um, because you can't leave it up to chance. Um, impact and presence. It's not what you have, but what you do. So it's not, well, I'm young or I'm this or I'm that. It's a matter about what you do and that can be learned. And some of the little tips that I'm going to give you today are all things where I've seen people just take one of the things from today, like that image of the sand. And then they've emailed me and gone, I took that image of the sand and I was active and I did this and this is the outcome. And everyone said, wow, you changed just from doing that. So this is where there's so many learnings right in front of us, you know, and you can think about people who do it well. And you can th think about other people who do it even worse than you. You can do the opposite of what they do. And you can start to kind of look at what they do and what that means for you as well. Um, oh, so let's have a look at the um, leadership characteristics. So having leadership presence and uh, presence and impact, what are some of the great leadership characteristics that you think would be on the top list? So if we're going to actively manage presence and impact, what are some of the great leadership characteristics? Let's just brainstorm, jump in the chat and just write a word. If I said authenticity, Craig, great opener. Listen, Emma, uh, bringing other people into the conversation, engaging. Yep, keep us going. Great leadership characteristics. Communication, transparency. Keep us going, a few more. Clarity, vision and purpose. Nice. Trust. Yeah, integrity. Here we go. Look at this list. Confident and courageous, authentic. So that's all the theory. But this just proves that you know all the theory already because that's what you want to experience. But the difference is, is we need to realize that that's what's important and actually start to emulate it more. So how are we going to take that into action in our everyday, in our everyday life? Um, so again, here's the Inspire Me model. And it's just important to kind of flag that I believe the first key element, I'm going to give you lots of tools and tactics and little bits and pieces, right? But at the fundamental, the first key element is to have clarity on your purpose and who you are as a leader. That's it. If you get that, then you apply those tools and builds on it, you'll have success. If you just apply the tools without that, you'll still have some success. But the really big key thing is dialing that in. And for me, where I dial that in with people is down in that unlock phase, getting clarity about who you are, what your strengths are, what vision and purpose and joy and meaning kind of have to you and getting that absolute clarity. Because when you get that clarity, that then you can speak confidently and that's when your confidence starts to go up and then you start to kind of get the impact. So I just kind of raise that as a, as a thought bubble for you to just to make sure that you dial in. You know, I had engineers going, Robin, but we're just engineers, you know, like, and I'm like, yeah, but the infrastructure we're building is saving people's lives. And I kind of think that's important, you know? You know, I was when I remember that, particularly when someone said that, I said one person a year is dying on the road that we're improving to save one person's life in a community that we actually live in, that we're driving on. Now, I can't think of any more kind of visionary and purpose driven. It's just that they've got bogged down with, you know, filling in check sheets and doing all that kind of stuff. 
And sometimes we just need to reconnect with our purpose. It is that it's actually there, but we just need to reconnect with it. So that's an important thing for you to kind of consider. So let's get practical um, with some tips and stuff that you can just grab and uh, grab and, uh, and use. And by the way, if there's any questions, feel free to put them in chat or just come off of uh, come off of mute as well. I'm just going to grab a quick drink. Is there any questions? Jump into chat if there are or come off mute. Perfect. I've bamboozled you. That's what the aim was. It means you don't get any questions. Um, so Craig's laughing. Um, the three V's of if we're thinking about our presence and our impact. Now, I don't know if this one's actually in here or not. I'm going to give you another tip. You might want to write this one down because I don't think I've actually got this in the slides. It's kind of like a top summary tip. When you're going to be going to a meeting, when you're going to be doing anything, presenting, whatever, just answer three questions for yourself. What do I want the, pe the person that I'm meeting or the audience, what, I, what do I want them to think? How do I want them to feel? And what do I want them to do as a consequence? It's really such a powerful model because it's like then from that, then you know which of these skills, tools, or tactics to use. Well, I, I want them to think that I know what I'm talking about. I want them to, to think that I've got skills and abilities in this area. And I want them to feel included. I want them to feel like I'm a trusted partner. I want them to feel kind of like, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, it might be that you're going into a, a meeting on performance development i want them to feel vulnerable i want them to feel <laughs> like they really need to step up their game so it's not always positives you know like if i'm thinking about this when i'm talking to my kids you know like i'm like how do i want to make them feel as a consequence you know and then what do i want them to do or act as a you know as an outcome that's you really getting into the audience's minds and that helps you with some of this stuff yeah so think feel do if you just did that for a few key meetings it would really help you strategize about how you show up to that. Um, so then even more practically then is when you've considered that visual, how are you going to show up visually, um, oh, visually to them vocally? How's that going to sound and verbally? So uh, with these three things, let me just double check. Yeah, so with the visual, vocal and verbal, we're looking at a whole range of things like how you dress, what's the environment that it's in, what words are you using, what tone are you using, you know, um, and thinking about the three Vs that you can really pull different um, levers on. And if you know one of them is weaker than another one, jump onto Google and, and, and you know, just you know, ask Google kind of the questions to delve into any one of those a little bit more. Um, and the key thing with that visual, vocal and verbal that I consider, you got the think, feel and do, but the research that came out of Harvard Business School um, showed that, yes, we make evaluations of people within a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds, few seconds of meeting them, so we make judgments that quickly, but the research showed that 80% of our judgments comes down to two factors. The other 20% of our judgment of, you know, me of uh, other Robin, for instance, you know, my, the, the other 20% is a whole range of other things, cultural upbringing, personal preferences and all that kind of stuff. So if we're looking at getting the cut through and having presence and impact with people, we've got the opportunity of focusing on two things. And if we focus just on those two things, we're focusing on 80% of how people are judging us. Does that make sense? So it's like a really good um, uh, way to optimize things. Um, so 80% relates to these two things, the warmth 
and strength. So warmth is how inclusive you are, the tone of your voice, the, so for me, everyone's heard Rob speak. For me, Rob's got a very warm voice. Rob's got a warmer voice than uh, definitely myself. And I kind of emulate sometimes Rob's kind of tone. He's got a lovely warm tone to the way that Rob, that Rob has, I reckon, to be honest. And so warmth is just that connection, that relationship. You know, do, does the other person see me as another human being? Is there kind of connection there? So that's one factor. But the other factor that amounts to the mm -hmm. 80% is strength. So strength is, let's pick on Rob for a change. I'm sure he won't mind. You know, so Rob's a lovely guy, but does he know what he's doing? Can he actually make a decision? Does he, does he, has he got like the skills and the abilities and the cut through to make it happen? Because he's a nice guy, but can he make it happen? And so it's the balance of warmth and strength that is the 80% of the, oh, there's a recommendation of a YouTube channel there. Uh, I'll have to, Lero, if you can grab that link and I'll have a look at that afterwards. Um, so 80% is on these two factors. And it's the balance of these two that's really our control and around the impact that we have on people. And you can also kind of consider in different situations, you would want to dial up warmth or dial down warmth or dial up strength or dial down strength, depending on the situation. But Alison, as you said, if you're in a workshop, it might be at the beginning, you're all kind of warm. And then when it comes to a certain part, then that's when you need to show your strength. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it can even be that it changes depending on the mood of the room as such. And um, any questions on this? I'm going to talk about this a little bit more because it's one of the super, super useful models. Mm -hmm. um, oh. So judgments from your wake are barely, uh, are rarely conscious and deliberate. The brain works in association. It makes snap decisions unconsciously. But these are the two factors that are actually happening for people. So this is like the golden nugget of understanding that you can really take away. That's a, a, one of the really, really um, useful ones. And, you know, obviously from, from research as well. So it's this balance of strength and warmth that then truly you get the leadership presence and impact. Now, if I show this in another way, this will kind of get you, <laughs> is that if we have warmth, but we don't have strength. Just think about that kind of person. They're a lovely person. Lero, he's a lovely person, but he couldn't fight his way out of a paper bag. You know, he's, he's never going to stand up. He's never going to man up. He's never going to achieve anything. He just hasn't got any strength because he's, he's, but he's lovely. He's a lovely guy. I pity Lero, you know, and we have pity for that kind of person when they've got all warmth, no strength we pity them but equally on the other side if someone is just and you might have seen well you might see someone in any one of these kind of spaces and maybe your you know acceptance in more of one of these spaces or you might be in that envy and fear which is like right we are doing this dun, 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 right from the get-go um, I'll give an example. I uh, did a negotiation once I met the most senior person from their organization he came in and I said to him I said, oh, hi, Mark, I think his name was. Nice to meet you. How was your weekend? He turned around to me, looked me in the eye, didn't shake my hand and said, what the beep has that got to do with you? I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Clearly a bit of, bit of strength happening right now. And so I said, okay, that's cool. What would you like to do? And so, you know, and then I moved the conversation and, and everything was right. So he was just going for absolute strength, no warmth in that situation. And I think we've, you know, you can all see leaders who are very, very, uh, strong like that even political ones as well the ones who have the strength sometimes even though we really like this person over here we might vote for this person because of the strength dynamic yeah um where someone has the warmth and they have the strength that's when we're in admiration of them now i'm going to pick someone for you and you may disagree with this and that's totally fine but you pick your own person Someone like David Attenborough. David Attenborough, he, you know, 
like I just, yeah, Damien agrees. Like I just feel that if I met him, that I think logically what would happen is that he would just give me a big hug because that's what he's like. You know what I mean? And then he's got so much strength. You could ask him anything about anything. And he would go, well, I don't know. But boom, 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 boom. I'm like, that's gold. Thank you, David. You know? So it's like when we combine those two, that's the sweet spot that we're getting. And then when you don't have the strength, where you don't have the, you know, right, we're going to, you know, they, they don't seem to have the passion for doing anything. And they don't even have the warmth for connecting with you. We just have contempt for those people because <laughs> they're like, who are they anyway? And so it's interesting that these emotional responses, that where are we on there? And I reckon for myself, I've been more on the envy and the fear side. I think that I've been too strong on particular times and needed to come over more on the warmth side. Um, and maybe in certain, maybe like you were saying, certain situations was maybe more strength and on such situations, more warmth and needed to pick up on the combination of those two to kind of move myself into that top right-hand quadrant, yeah. Um, what I do with uh, groups of people, I get them to stamp and go, right, where are you, for a bit of an acceptance. But I'll let each of you kind of pick, you know where you are, and that's the most important thing. Um, so this is where we're going to be in the executive, inspirational, having the presence and the impact uh, and, and doing that. Um, so I'm going to give you some different strategies that you can use um, to have more strength and more warmth. And um, the first thing is, if you don't sound and look like you're confident, then they will think you're not sure. So just picking on you, Alison, if you in a workshop say, hey, guys, look, I think that we need to finish in five minutes. They're going to go, well, you don't sound sure. We're going to keep talking. Mm -hmm. Thanks. If you say, guys five minutes, we have to finish. They go, oh, she's him. <laughs> <laughs> we might do it now. So it's that the difference is the strength and the warmth in those two tones. Does that make sense? Mm. This comes back to that visual, vocal and verbal. And, you know, like I can do a hand movement to go, we've got to finish at this time. You know, if I'm kind of like, oh, well, I think and I'm moving around a lot, People are like, look, he, even his body doesn't even agree with him, you know? So it's that basic, I was kind of laughing, but it's but it's it's that basic. Um, yeah, firm, fair, and reasonable, absolutely. Um, so this is where, like, this stuff sounds simple, and to God's honest truth, everything that comes out of my mouth is simple, because if it was complex, it wouldn't be coming out of my mouth. <laughs> it's common knowledge, it's not common practice, and that's the difference. And if we do it, we, and that's why I want you to be really conscious about it to, to get these better outcomes. Um, trust. So these are the words that emulate strength, confident, authoritative, competent, knowledgeable, assertive. These are the words that you want to kind of um, focus on. The warmth words are being the listener, the collaboration, the open, the compassionate, the inquisitive and that. And it's the balance between the two of these that's, that's actually important. So that's where we build trust. And like I say, in different situations, you want to dial some up or, or down depending on the, on the situation. Um, yeah. So again, with trust, thinking about the warmth and the strength, let's look at our visual, vocal and verbal and what's the ingredients for the combination that we want for them um, and what, how we want the other person or group of people to think, feel or do. And so we're looking for alignment between those different uh, alignment between those different things. Yeah. Um, so a few more things that we need to consider. So I'm going to give you a few other like little strategies and things that you can do, and then we'll open up for some any, well, in actual fact, before I go into some different strategies, any, um, any questions on anything I've covered so far? Um, Robin, I, yep. I, I sometimes, um, um, how do I say, build from, build from my opinion, and perhaps I haven't listened enough to the room to get the room's opinion to help, help me take them to where I want to go. Does that make sense at all? No. 
Um, so are you, is it that um, you want to tell them your opinion, but you don't know if you've actually got their opinion to put in the melting pot first so that you've connected with them? Sure. Yep. Well is that said. right or not? Yes. No, that, that's, that's said. Yes. Cool. So the key thing to do there is you've got two purposes in your mind, and this is what sometimes happens. So what we do normally is we try to do both and we're ineffective with both. Gotcha. That's me. <laughs> okay, cool. So what I would say is be clear that you want both and then you do one, then you do the other. Okay. Thank you. So it's literally like, and, and I, I had personally had this, and this is the technique that I use to help me where I would say, Hey guys, got two things to do. First one is let's have a chat about and hear from everyone what they think around subject X. And then second is for us to put it together and kind of confirm what, you know, I, I kind of think and we'll bring all those bits and pieces into a conclusion. Does that make sense? It does. So you well, do one yeah. thoroughly, then you do the other one. And that was just an example, but yeah. Um, yeah, does that help? It does, incredibly, yes. Yeah. Cool, good. And this is in negotiation. Negotiation go really badly because I'm trying to build a relationship with you. I'm trying to influence, but I'm still trying to get you to agree to something. No, yeah. no, no, no. Do one at a time and even have a separate meeting for each as well. Yeah, chunk it, break it down, much more effective. Yeah. Um, Before you move on, I've just yeah. got a quick one for you. Um, dealing, obviously dealing with different people, clients internally, externally, where you've got that warmth versus strength and sort of building that trust in between. Do you have any strategies for say dealing with um, a, a client as an example that is just not interested in the warmth side of things? So, yeah. you know, when you've got that, you're just sort of trying to balance the warmth and strength, but they just don't care. How do we, how do we still build that trust if they're not interested in that? Like this is, uh, uh, I might sound a bit confrontational here. What you're doing is you're not accepting them for who they are. Because they're being very clear, I don't want this. And you're trying to, you're, you're not actually accepting for who they are. And it's actually okay for them to be just in strength and not want that kind of stuff. Mm. And so we as individuals need to accept and respect that other person for who they truly are and then go cool as a consequence therefore for you don't tell them this but for them we're just going to deal with them in that way because that's what is value for them does that make sense mm -hmm. and it's almost i've seen this so many times in business development they're like right we need trusted partnerships with everyone and i've been there as a client going look hey i Emma, I just, I just want someone tactically to do this stuff. You're very good at it. I like you, but I don't want to be having coffees with you every month because it's a waste of time because I just need this, but I do value it. And if you keep pushing me to waste my time having nice coffees with you, I'm just going to go and find someone else who actually listens to me and, and, and gives me what I need. Does that make sense? Hmm. And so I actually see it sometimes. We try to put everyone in a particular kind of box, but it's actually like just adjusting your style to kind of suit. Um, also, there can be a category that when you really think about it, there might be customers in actual fact that you go, cool, I do respect them and acknowledge them who they are. I just don't want to do business with them in the future. <laughs> and that's OK as well. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm lucky in the way that I only work with people who I actually like. And if I don't like them and connect with them, I, I just won't because there's someone else out there who will like them. Does that make sense? Mm. And so. Yeah, does that does that help? It does. Yeah, it's always a bit of a battle in trying to find the right um, level on both sides, you know. Yeah, because yeah. um, I'm typically more of a warm person, um, so yeah. having that battle with someone that isn't can correct. Really and you can feel like, oh, they're really harsh and stuff. But it's like you know, bring your warmth out with those guys who love it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's literally, if you learn Mandarin, for instance, you know, you'd be an idiot to kind of talk to people who didn't know Mandarin in Mandarin. Do you know what I mean? You're mm. just communicating in a way which they don't receive. 
But when you're over here with the Mandarin speaking audience, yeah, go for your life. Give them all the Mandarin. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's literally like that. It's, um, they just don't compute it. So, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, some effective strategies here um, to think about bringing warmth and strength is be concise, be pre precise, speak with conviction and absolute certainty. So you might go, oh, that's a problem for me. And I'm like, great, grab it as a problem. Now, what do we do about it? And all I would say is before any important meeting, you write down for yourself what are your key messages for that thing. Even test it with other people to get clarity on it before you go in the meeting. Because I see too many people go, yeah, that's a struggle for me, but then they don't do anything about it. So what is it that you can do to be more helpful for self so that you can set yourself up for success? Um, this is another one that requires a little bit of preparation. Some I, I tend to do this on the spot, but um, you can do this in preparation. Have a convincing rationale with evidence. The facts speak for themselves. Look at the metrics. So, um, for instance, just with this one, what I say is an effective strategy is to say your conclusion. And Alison, this one, just pick on you because you said it, is that, you know, conclusion. We need to finish in five minutes because lunch is ready. <laughs> you know, the meeting's booked by someone else. And we all said that coming to a conclusion on this was essential. You know what I mean? Everyone goes, okay, I've got that now. So if you, and there's research shown that if you, provide a statement with three points of rationale even if those points of rationale are wrong or or not even they don't even make sense people will go okay that makes sense so mm -hmm. it's actually a it's, a, it's actually a trick persuade so they've done it with like fake points of rationale and everyone's gone oh well they gave three points of rationale it must be true can be the can kind of got to be a bit careful i wouldn't i wouldn't do that but it just shows the power of convincing kind of rationale like just giving some data getting them focused on that um actually to balance your arguments with contrary opinion um can be an effective strategy so to actually go and this could be one for you rob look let's actually weigh up the pros and the cons so one idea for you rob in that situation where you want to get their views but you also want to give them their view and say hey everyone what i want to do is i want to present to you some of my rationale on thinking about the direction I think we should go in. And what I would love to invite is everyone to let, you know, brainstorm. What is it we like? What is it we don't like about it so we can refine it? Does that mm. make sense? That because does. that's real humility. And it's also buying people into the, buying people into the, the strategy. Because mm. when someone comes in and says, right, this is what we're going to do. And I'm right because I've done the leadership presence and impact. And I'm showing strength. Everyone thinks what a dickhead. They don't know what they're talking about. Mm. So we need to have that sense of humility kind of um, around it. So, yeah, if you apply that strategy to your situation, that's how it could look. Does that make sense? You, you need to gain full value out of all of the intelligence, all of the thinking in the room, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So when you present an idea, it's just a theory to be tested. Yes. And Alison, again, picking on you, you could do that. Say, hey, you know, look, I feel we shouldn't finish in 10 minutes, but if we didn't, what would be the consequences? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, we do need to finish in 10 minutes because lunch is hot and I can smell it and we need to be out of the room. Okay, you've said it, not me. Let's do it then. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the thing. Um. Reduce and simplify and keep your points strong. There's three reasons. Engineering reports, you know, in whose organization used to be great, used to be recommendations for all of these reasons. It'd be like 20 or 30 of them. And I'd go, I don't agree with number 13 or number 18 or that number, you know. But the overall recommendation is right. You've just given me too much to argue back with. Just give me the top three non-negotiable reasons why this makes this the right way to go. That's all I need to know. Yeah. Um, and so just make sure that your points are, are, are kind of strong. And some of these things, if you're particularly an introverted thinker, just involve a little kind of preparation and for you to get the clarity first of all. That's what's key. Um, so this is something that's a little bit conceptual, but interesting, I think, in the way of, you know, as we go in our careers, we tend to be in the blue. 
we tend to be in the information in the data and we've got knowledge and we prove our knowledge by you know adding value because that's what's needed but then we get to a certain part of our career or as emma's kind of saying when we're dealing with customers that that's kind of a given and what we actually need to communicate to clients is the intelligence that we have they don't need to know what data or bits of pieces and all that kind of stuff they just need to know they need to have the confidence that we know all that blue stuff and that we know what we're talking about with our you know with true value and so it's a knowledge value chain of just like thinking where are we at any particular kind of um uh, particular kind of time so it's a little bit more conceptual but it's helpful to kind of go yeah i think we're just we're bogged down in proving that we're right as opposed to genuinely demonstrating value for people um yeah um another key one is about sell the benefits which is about how this will help the other person right now this is where people get really confused with selling the benefits and i'm going to give you um, um a great example of selling the benefits um which is this which is a feature is what something is it is you know it is an apple a feature is a factual statement specification of proposal idea or offer oh no it's come off oh so low yeah so the feature is it's low calorie but the benefit is what the person will gain from it is if you have this you're going to look better than the donkey from accounting at the end of year party that's the benefit of eating apples does that make sense so i know that was a bit jokey one but it's that type of thing is like do i really care that it's low calorie what benefit does that actually really mean and get into benefits for other people that's where you will get the cut through yeah um and the easiest way of doing this is you just turn it into a benefit to use this statement what this means for you look i'm facilitating a workshop i think we need to do this because this is what it means for you pause leaving silence sometimes is as strong as actually saying anything as well and let them kind of go oh okay yep there's something to that yeah um some of the final kind of effective strategies are understanding the other person's decision making um, criteria so you just need to ask them how do you make decisions around this what will be helpful how can i be helpful um, for that etc yeah how will they decide yes or no not what you think they should do um because people see pictures in their minds so asking how the other person sees this and getting them to clearly articulate what they see versus the you know the picture that you're trying to paint or try and even use those words like i'm trying to paint you a picture right now that this is what i want to kind of create for you so that they're really connecting with it can be helpful because as soon as you're helpful to the way the brain works the person likes you because you're making it easy for them yeah um the final thing i think it is it's a way and towards language so we can be motivating come on it's all motivating it's all great or it can be hey zoe if you don't do this you're fired like what's actually going to be motivating um what's actually going to be motivating for you and um, what's interesting is we say here that about balancing you know away language and towards language so let's balance it up which is like hey guys i think we need to go this way because we wouldn't want that to happen do you know what i mean it's like let's be inspirational and let's be balanced so i think we need to be balanced and you probably would have seen people who are it's an emergency it's an emergency all the other time and you see other people who are you know they don't want to admit reality because they're trying to be inspirational the whole time and you're going yeah but your idea is rubbish <laughs> and they're just like no but the world's going to be a better place and you're like oh god you're away with the fairies so if you do one or the other it's too much it's about the balance and this is what we recommend with regards to towards and away you know to be to be balanced but there is a truth which is actually this that we run three times faster away from pain than we do towards joy so if you think about elections political ones you love that person but these kind of and they're lovely 
But these people have told us that if we vote for them, these evil things are going to happen. Therefore, we still go for these because we don't want the bad thing to happen. And if you think about survival, you know, as we haven't actually evolved much more than cave people, you know, we just want to survive. If we can thrive, great, but we want to avoid pain. So, and then you might kind of go, okay, so we should be more negative, but I'm just kind of telling you the way that the brain works and how people can be negatively impacted by it. And really what I'd be saying is, hey, look, we want less of that and we want more of that, don't we? Mm -hmm. And showing people actual pictures and everyone going, damn, right, yeah. <laughs> oh. So um, we need to think about people's hearts and minds when we're connecting with them, which is both the strength uh, and the warmth. Um, they're both important aspects. But as Emma said, picking up with whatever the need for the other person um, is and adjusting our style uh, to suit is really important. And so summarize with some key points. The first thing is that you need to have your own clarity on your purpose and who you are as a leader. You know, if you're going to be going for a job interview, you've got to know who you are, what you stand for, and what you're going to bring to that organization and what it's going to look like and communicate to them in a way that they know what it looks like for you being in the role. You're more likely to kind of get it. So you need to do that work to understand that clarity. Obviously, that's what I work with people on in that unlock phase. Um, and then the key points around lifting the influence and impact is, you know, knowing that 80% of the impact relates to warmth and strength. You know, be clear with what your vision is. Be clear with your message. Exploit multiple forums, every meeting, every conversation to ensure consistency with the way in which you approach things. Keep it simple. Use metaphors, analogies, examples, and stories to paint a picture uh, for people. Um, say it time and time again, uh, it can be helpful. And every uh, vehicle possible to constantly and consistently communicate your vision and the strategy so people just generally know who you are and what you're about and you'll bring them along on the journey. So let's jump in the chat. What was your key insight? Or come off a of mute, I'd love to hear. What was your key insight from everything that I just went through there in the last 50 minutes? Um, I'd, I'd like to suggest that it's um, preparation. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, be, be prepared for the meeting and understand what you want to get out of it before you go into it. Yeah. Just I see so many people um come off the telephone walk in the room have the meeting jump back on the telephone yeah so yeah we don't make it easy for ourselves and we actually set ourselves up for, uh, for failure quite quite a bit to be honest yeah absolutely um i also think can you hear me there Rob? yeah go for it wayne yeah, so I also think it's pretty important to know the people in the room. Um, I got invited to a place last week and long story short, one of the safety guys said, we need you in this meeting. Uh, can you make sure you're available? I sort of said to him, look, you know, uh, what's it all about? And he said, oh, there's some safety concerns. Long story short, I walked into the room and um, there was nobody in there for safety. They're all in there for commercial reasons. Mm. So just the first thing I did, and I, first thing I got out of the whole um, scenario was who was in the room with me. So I said, look, just before we start the conversation, I've just been asked to pop in here uh, to discuss some points raised by uh, this gentleman here that I've just met. Um, what's everybody's expectations? What are they looking for for the next sort of half an hour um, while I'm attending this meeting with you? And it was yeah. really nice because the five or six people in the room all had different things they were looking from it. But what it gave me was, you know, the instruction of what I can deliver and what they were looking for instead of sitting there for half an hour and then trying to deal with it at the end, I knew at the start what everybody's expectations were and, you know, why the reason they, they invited me to come along. So I mm. find that's really easy because then you can get your point across. Um, you can find if like somebody like Emma, like you mentioned before, wants to know, you can sort of know a bit about the character of the person when they talk to you for the 30 seconds as you go around the room. And, um, you know, my, my purpose was, you know, why are we here today? What were you looking for from this meeting? And just tell us a bit about yourself. Mm. it's always nice most people start with they've got kids and everything like that and that's great and then you got the other people say i just want to know these three things from you and then i've got to get to my next meeting so you can yeah. sort of judge them like you said earlier mm. um who's who's there to get out of the room who's there to have a discussion with you yeah perfect and there's um just a couple of things one there's a link if anyone wants to catch up for a free 25 minute chat with me about the content that we've gone through today if you click on that link it's in the chat you can grab it you know, booking now sometime this week, next week, it's up to you. So 
So that's something. And then maybe Lero, if you want to put the other links, because a couple of people are dropping off, there's some other links there. I've got like a free book and um, a Kickstarter series and the YouTube channel. There's other links that you can get there. But the link for the, um, the individual chat, you can just book straight in with us. And Wayne, what you're saying there, there's a, there's a model that's called, and it comes back to Rob, is the, the five P's model. If you go to every meeting, anything that you do, what is the purpose? What is the product or the outcome that you want to achieve? Therefore, what people do you need to have in the room? What is the right process or agenda? You know, and is it multiple meetings or whatever? And then the final P is what preparation do you need to do before you even engage with the other person, which is about getting clear on your key messages and everything else like that, and actually sending your five Ps to the other person. So that when you get in the room, you can actually meet their expectations because you said, Wayne, you're all on the same page right from the get go. And you're actually setting up the relationship for success. Does that make sense? Mm, awesome. Um. Yeah, so I'll leave that. I'll leave that slide up so that, that people can book in for a free twenty-five minute chat to um, talk through individual kind of issues or whatever you want to do with me. That's with me. Um, but other questions, queries on anything that we've done today? Oh, there's something in the chat coming. Oh, hi, Robin. Um, awesome presentation. Um, that pyramid that you showed around the sort of the intelligence kind of piece where it mm. changed, what strategies or tactics have you got for people who may be more introverted and need to kind of inject into a conversation where you have other people that are maybe more strong in those conversations? So I think that's obviously a challenge to it's not only getting people to be impactful, but it's also finding ways for people who need to try and get into those, those conversations in a practical manner. Any thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, I think it's really about the, the prior preparation to think about in a meeting, um, what some of your key messages that you wanna get across. And, and also a, a, a helpful tip is to, you know, for instance, if you're gonna interject into a meeting, actually interject by saying, hey guys, I've got three things. <laughs> Everyone, in their mind goes, oh, he's got three things. <laughs> Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. And so they're primed because they're like, I, I, they're, they're literally, their mind is going, I wonder what the three things are. Do you know what I mean? If you go to just try and say a whole number of things that you'll get cut off and this and that and the other, and even go, I've got three things. The first is this, and then hold your kind of finger up as you're talking to that number thing and then go, yeah, number two is kind of da 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 da, -da And then number three, and you can tend to get all three points across. The thing with introverts, particularly in a collaborative meeting, um, that can be tricky is that you, you don't actually know yet. You know, you know that you want to go off and think about it, but what you can do in that meeting is to say so. It's to say, hey guys, appreciate. Thank you very much for the meeting today. I just want to flag, I'm a little bit concerned around the area of X that we were discussing I don't know yet, but what I'd love to do is just go and uh, do some uh, checks and stuff. And is it okay if I come back to, who should I come back to tomorrow? Does that make sense? So that even though you don't know, you're putting it on the table as an expectation for people to engage with. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, it's great. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Other people, questions, queries? <clears throat> Oh, probably, probably another question then. Well, if there's silence in yeah, the room, different. you've obviously come into a situation doing a webinar to probably majority strangers. What yeah. were you doing in your mind to prep for this session? Mm. Oh, we mm. might... What was I doing in prep for this session? I, I think I, I like, and I didn't do this consciously. I do it subconsciously. Now it's the, the think, feel, do. What is it that I want people to, to what is it that I want them to know? There's content in here that I want them to know. So I want to get through all the content, boom, boom, boom. And we'll send you the slides. So you've got them as a, as a little reminder and the recording. So you've got that. Um, so I want them to know that. How do I want them to feel? I want them to feel like there's other people like us and you know, having negative thoughts or self-confidence or 
or feeling like, you know, we sometimes say stuff and it doesn't get heard is a normal thing for all of us. So we're all on this journey to kind of together um, and a sense of kind of community. And, you know, I want people to have their, you know, lots of webinars are you come on and it, it automatically turns your video camera off and turns your audio off. I'm not that kind of person. I want you to feel included in the conversation. What do I want you to do? Most importantly, I want you to do something differently to improve your life. That's what I ultimately want you to do. And if I can help with that, fantastic. And I'll give you lots of free resources and stuff that you can do. So I was kind of thinking about, right, what, do, what is it I want to think or, or know? And what is it, that, how do I want them to feel? And what do I want them to do? I was probably thinking about that, to be honest. Yes. And so that feeling is that I talk to you, even though we haven't physically met and seen it. I'm talking to you the way that I would just talk to a client who I've been working with for five years. I'm talking to you the same way that I would talk to a very close friend and stuff like that, because, because that's my world of making food. Cause a lot of people right now in the world, I think feel tremendously unconnected. Mm. And a lot of people feel a lot of isolation and think that it's just them. And, and that's not actually true. Mm. And that's what I think leads to a lot of the mental health epidemic, but that's kind of a different story. But um, so, yeah, I was kind of, yeah. And I know my, you know, like I've got the clarity on who I am and what I'm about. So if you turn around to me and said, hey, Robin, that was just the biggest pile of shit ever. Like, I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there'll be something else for you somewhere else. That's fine. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. knowing, knowing my purpose is the thing that keeps me very, very solid as such, if that makes sense. Yeah. And um, we've just gone over time, but I'm happy to answer any other questions. And if anyone wants to drop off, then you can go for your life. Um, and that just like one, one quick story, which uh, lingers in my mind. Mm. About six years ago, I suppose, uh, I went to a dinner with Lee Matthews. There was a mm. group of about 10 people around the table. I guess people know who Lee Matthews is, mm. um, the super player, super coach. And uh, someone asked the question of him, sort of, what do you think about uh, players picking captains? And he said, yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. And I thought, that doesn't sound like Lee Matthews, but I'll accept his answer. Mm. So anyway, uh, as it turned out, I wasn't drinking that night and I was asked to run him back to his hotel here in Perth. I jumped in the car with him and I said, I'm confused, Lee. Someone asked you a question about players picking coaches. Mm. What if they get the wrong one? He said, that's the art of being a good coach, Rob. So there you go. It's uh, it's about uh, how you prepare the room. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. Um, yeah, there's a lot in that. Uh, yeah, it, lingered with, it lingered in my head for a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, any final questions, queries from anyone? Otherwise, we'll close off. But happy to answer it. Awesome. Well, you guys go well. You know where I am. I'm here. I do what I do if you need a help. And as I say to people, getting stuck is inevitable. Staying stuck is a choice. There's so much help and resources out there. And even if you want to have a chat because you don't know, I'm happy to have a chat with you and point you in the right direction. So um, look after yourselves, have fun, and uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers, guys. Bye now. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Feel free to share with friends and check out what's up next for more videos from my channel.